call me. And welcome customer sales partners and colleagues. We welcome you to Hydraulics Tech Talk, running for the second year on Rexroth Live from ASEAN and Oceania. A quick hello around the region. Good morning to ASEAN countries and also wishing a good afternoon to our audience in Australia and New Zealand. I believe we have a few other areas outside the region also registered to this Hydraulics Tech Talk. So welcome. We keep moving for and with you because when we move, you win. It is a pleasure for me, Inga Laurineka, to be your host for this event. Thank you very much for joining us yesterday and today. And the Hydraulics Tech Talk web seminar series has two focuses. The first day was about Bosch Rexroth service capabilities. And today, we'll be focusing more on our technology and solutions and their applications. We'll have the regional president to talk a little bit more about this very soon. But before that, I'd like to remind you that we have both chat and Q&A functions on this platform. Feel free to drop us a line of comments, suggestions, or questions at any time. Tell us what you think in which areas you want us to give you more support or how we can support you more efficiently and safely. And now, let's hear from Roland Keller, Regional President, ASEAN and Oceania. Oh, I see. And how are oh, you? Goodness. You can hear me now. Good morning. Ina. I can hear Ina. you loud and clear. Uh, so how are you, Roland? Very good. Thank you. Finally. We're beyond Cafe here. You know, and it's always Ooh. inspiring to be here with our factory of the future. Mm. The picture and, and <laughs> our hydraulics future uh, strategy map that we have behind us. And listening yesterday to the real life examples from service was quite exciting. Wow, it is indeed very exciting. What a cool t-shirt you got there and a cool, even cooler working space, Roland. Yes, so the, the, the t-shirt I like because it's about our, let me see that I get this right here, uh, about our game changer. Yeah? The game changer is our Control X product from the factory automation side. We call it the iPhone uh, of the automation. It works with apps and we're bringing the factory automation product, as I mentioned yesterday already, Hmm. also into our controls products for the hydraulics and with this develop solutions for our customers that have not been there before you will learn about the cycle box you see it just next to you behind you sure. uh, which can reduce energy consumption up to 70 percent they are very 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 powerful yeah. and um but going back to yesterday i would first like to apologize for any technical issues if there were any um, for me, there, there were some, and maybe the problem is in front of the computer. That's what a lot of people say. Yeah? So I, I missed the energy cylinder talk, uh, which actually, from my perspective, the energy 
cylinder. What our most successful products in the region are to maintain those energy cylinders is utmost critical to do it in a professional way. If, if it isn't done properly, you might have incidents, really serious accidents, where then thousands of people are suffering because there's no power. Yeah? We had this where the, the turbine now, so I hope uh, everything's okay. Okay, now we're back. So to take care of the product in a, in a professional manner, using original spare parts, I think is what we are for. And that should have transpired yesterday. The question comes up, came up, how, what's the warranty on our product? Yeah, but one thing you must understand, when we are repairing our product, the standard procedure, we're bringing it back to specification. That means it is like new, yeah? It might not look on the outside on every aspect like new, but the internal parameters to drive that product are basically within those specifications. And that's what we are guaranteeing for. So the original, a very, very strong point. I'm just looking at my notes here. Also, very happy yesterday to see our partner being part of our endeavor. They will be going forward an ever growing force with whom we together make want to make sure we service our customers yeah uh, we cannot be in every space we cannot service every product uh, it was mentioned yesterday if it's not a Rexroth product i also want to make sure i can take care of it and the customer yeah and this is when where we have a if you have a strong partner and they can take care of that competitor product why not yeah then we take care of you in combination with our partner yeah what we will learn about today and i mentioned at the beginning I think it's really at my heart. It's about driving sustainability to improving productivity, efficiency. Yeah? We have products that are running for 20 years, then they come off the machine, they get a new seal kit, and they run another 20 years. Especially on the Haglands products, this system is so modular where we're basically driving a shaft directly without gearbox. Yeah, there's nothing better than a direct drive. Yeah? Imagine you have a car, you don't need the gearbox, so gearbox can't break. So that's the basic principle. And if you want to modify your system, and we have this a lot in sugar mills where constant optimizations are driven and there comes a new press in there, yeah, a new feeder there, you can literally take off those drives, plug it on another drive. Yeah? And so I, I would think there's little that is as sustainable than this. Yeah? And reducing energy consumption, I think not only is it sustain driving sustainability, reducing CO2, but here in Singapore, I can tell you, power is expensive. So if I can reduce my energy bill by 50%, I'm, I'm for it. I'm for it. I'm going for it. The recuperation of the invested cost is relatively fast. Yeah? So, so you will learn today about this opportunity, um, not only the energy, also the space, the noise yeah, of these new drive units, the hydraulic power units are from the Citro family. Um, and it is not a future product. It is not a next product. It's a now product. Yeah? We have customers latching onto it and putting it into the machine. It is a totally new dimension. So I look forward to it. And without much belaboring further, I would like to wish you a great day. Enjoy it. Um, keep it interactive. Like Inga said, we rely on your interaction, your questions, your comments, your suggestions. Keep it coming in. I want to see the chat overflowing. Okay? So. Have a great day, and i talk to you this afternoon. Thank you. Cheers. Back to you, Inga. Thank you so much, Roland. So uh, we value our customers and our partners so much. That's why we have this two days event, where, which is the first day. It was about Wash Racks Rock Service Capabilities, where we took the audience for a tour around our service centers in the region. We also highlighted our repairs and service for proportional valves, Hagland drives, mobile hydraulics aftermarket, energy cylinders, and systems the one that Roland just mentioned uh, you about. And we explained to you the benefits of service agreements and showed you our collaboration with our certified partner servicing the marine business. Once again, thank you very much, Roland. His energy really is a game changing and it is rubbing off on me, uh, guys. I hope it will rub off on you, our audience too, and we'll see more engagement in the audience today. Yeah. So now, let's now begin with our first session for today. It is the hydraulic cylinders which is have a lot of application and we all know this, but do you know how to choose the right cylinder road coding, especially one for civil engineering applications? 
such as in the use case of flood prevention. So Kong Nguyen from our Vietnam office will show you how in the videos coming right up. Hi everyone, my name is Khoa. I'm Senior Sales Manager and working at Postgres Road Vietnam. My topic today is how to choose the right Senior Road coding for your application in civil engineering sector. Before starting my presentation, I would like to show a video about the current situation in Vietnam. As you can see from the video, in recent years, the Vietnam government has approved many projects to build barriers to protect the land from a stone water intrusion from flooding. In this barrier, the gates are operated by hydraulic cylinder, and the cylinder are working in a corrosive environment. So, it is important that the cylinder road should have a special coating to protect them from corrosive attacks and to have a long lifetime. I will start my presentation now. Um, in my presentation, I will talk about uh, first, uh, I will show you how important to have the right uh, coating. In the second part, I will introduce about different uh, coating technology uh, from the old technology like the surface uh, like the hard chromium, uh, the thermal spray, and uh, the latest uh, coating technology like the laser cladding. And in the third part, I will talk about the testing and qualification. So, uh, you, as you know, in mechanical engineering, the um, typology is very important especially in a hydraulic uh, component like cylinder, the material, the surface, and the fluids, all should be massed together in such a way to achieve optimum efficiency with minimal wear. So the coating will provide the good surface for typological system. When you talk about the coating technology, we talk about the production technology and the coating materials and the coating will be applied on a substrate like the carbon steel and the cinder is working in the environment where we have the corrosion from the chemical, we have the mechanical impact, wear and a lot. So in both thresholds, we developed uh, many different uh, coatings and we improve the coating uh, quality and the coating process. From 1980, we already developed the plasma spread ceramic surface and we introduced it to the first market in 1989. This was very famous at that time with the brand Ceramax coatings. And in 1996, 96, we developed a SVOF spread a surface technology and we introduced this technology to the market in 2000 with the two brands, Endurock 2000 and Endurock 2200. In the year 2002, we developed the overlaid welded surface technology, and in 2006, we supplied the cylinder with this coating to the market with the brand Endurock 3000 and 3200. And in 2015, we developed the laser overlaid welded surface technology and we call that Endurop 3. And until now, it's still the best coating in the market. 
So you can see the photo of the cylinder rod here. If we choose the wrong coating, the cylinder rod will have the corrosion issue and that leads to the cylinder failure in operating. Yeah. Talking about the coating technology, we have different also technology. Uh, in my presentation, I will focus on the electrochemicals and the hard facings. Uh, talking about the electrochemical first, we have the hard chrome plating. So the hard chrome plating is uh, tend to be thicker than the decorative uh, plating. Uh, the thickness of the hard chrome plating is from 25 micron to 250 microns, while the decorative uh, chromium plating uh, has the thickness of one micron only. So this process is very old technology we all learn from the school. It's the electroplating process where the chromium is deposited from the chromium acid solution and the deposition rate is about 25 micron per hour. Due to environment issue, such uh, technology are no more allowed in some European country. Using this uh, coating technology, uh, we have the high hardness from 900 to 1100 SV. Uh, it's hard but liable to break easily. And if you put the coating under microscope, you can see the micro crack structure, which is good for the typological system but unfavorable for the corrosion resistance. Because you know, the corrosion resistance is due to chromium oxide layer and the chlorides in the environment. They prevent the chromium oxide formation. So you have the pitting corrosion. Now I will go to the next uh, coating technology, which is the thermal spraying, uh, including the plasma spraying and SVOF. The thermal spray coating is a coating process uh, in which you have the uh, powder uh, sprayed onto the substrate to build the coating. This the technology differs from the supply material uh, powder versus white from the heat source like uh, electric or flame from the flame temperature from the flame speed. So talking about the SVOF uh, thermal spray process, it's a coating process in which uh, the powder, usually a matrix of the metal, are heated uh, together by the, um, heated by the burning gas and uh, oxygen, and after that, it will be a spray onto the uh, substrate uh, and to build the uh, coating and in the SVOF spray process uh, you don't need very high temperature like the plasma the temperature is about 2500 degrees Celsius and the velocity is high which is about 2000 meter per second and the typical coating pattern uh, is the metal and in this sort we use uh, mostly chrome and uh, chromium and nickel. So regarding the thermal spray process, here you have the substrate and will be clean and then it go to the crease blasting process uh, for the surface preparation and to improve the bonding, the mechanical bonding of the coating. And after that, they go to the spraying process uh, with the powder and after that, we go to the finishing, uh, holding, and then after that, you have the road ready for assembly into the cylinder. Here, you can see the coating Endurock 2000 and 2200 under microscope. The Endurock 2000, they have one layer, and in the Endurock 2200, you have the two layer 
the top layer just like Android 2000 and you have the second which is we call it the bond layer which is protects the road from the corrosion so the benefit of this coating is very high corrosion protection like for Android 2000 they can withstand 15,000 hours and for Android 2200 which means the dual layer uh, you can have the 60,000 hours with the soil droplets test this coating has very extreme high wear resistance a significant layer thickness and extremely low porosity levels and this coating is compatible with the SIM smart so uh, this photo will show the our uh, SVOF facility in uh, Bostel, uh, Netherlands. We have two coating center, and the coating capacity is for cylinder with uh, the length of 25 meter, with a diameter from uh, 60 to 1,000 millimeter, and for the weight up to 22 tons. So, how to choose the right coating for your application? As you can see here, we have a differentiate between different zones from zone uh, 1 to zone 4. So, in zone 1, normally for the water uh, hydropower plant, uh, you can choose the copper steel with chromium platings. But from zone 2, uh, you can consider the copper steel with Android 2000 or the, you can choose stylus steel with uh, chromium platings. In zone 3, you already have the, the chemical exposure. So it's better to choose the carbon steel with Android 2200. And in zone uh, 4, which is near the sea, it's better to choose the Android 2200. That means a uh, two layer coating. Depending on other criteria, you can also choose the different coating, like the product dimension, the request from your customer, the requirement on the corrosion resistance, and so on. So now I will go to the latest uh, coating technology, which is a cladding, including the laser cladding and a PTA process. So in the laser cladding, I will focus on the two process, which is the PTA and laser cladding. So in this process, uh, you have uh, the difference between the two process is just the energy what you use. So for the PTA, the energy is by plasma, and for the laser cladding, the energy is from, from the laser. So the additive, the powder, they go to the melt point and heat it uh, by the uh, plasma or the, by the laser and to go to the deformation and build a coating on the substrate with high with this property which is a high corrosion resistant wear resistant and other mechanical properties and it's also good for the typological process. The Android 3 can be used with the SIMS uh, mask as well. Uh, the SIMS mask is developed by the post engineering. Maybe we can introduce about this uh, sensor in a different uh, topic. So the benefit of the Android 3 is very extreme corrosion protection. So more than 80,000 hours and no porosity uh, comparing to the SVOF, you have the porosity of 2%. Uh, you have very high wear resistance uh, and easy fuel repair. And you can choose with the SIM Smart with the special sensor developed by Post Group. Uh, in the third part, we talk about the testing and the qualification. So it depends on the coating. You have a different test. You have the corrosion test, uh, mechanical test, 
uh, cytological test and microscopic test. Here show the labor uh, in our um, uh, factory in Boxdale, Netherlands. You can see the engineer are working in the uh, laboratory uh, to inspect the cylinder rod. So the cylinder rod will be put in the uh, zone tropics corrosion test. Uh, that is uh, based on the ISO uh, for five three six, and uh, we do it also for all the sample for uh, coating. And after that, the, they can go to the scrap and wear test, where you can use uh, like the sharp chain or the or the grid. And here you can see the the, the picture of the ceiling rod after six tests. And the Endurock 2200 show the best uh, quality comparing to different auto coating. Here I will show you the table to compare the different uh, coating layer. In terms of uh, thickness, the hardness, the maximum stress, the corrosion resistance, the wear resistance, and the impact strength. Depending on customer requirement, depending on environment, you can choose the right coating for you. That is the end of my presentation. But before I end up my presentation, I would like to show a video of the project we did recently in Vietnam. Let's enjoy it. There you have it folks, how to choose the right coding for cylinder roads for civil engineering applications. Now if you have any questions, any questions at all about cylinder coding, let's connect to Koa in Ho Chi Minh City and please type in your questions in the Q&A box or on the chat room now. Koa, good morning, hi. Good morning. Hey. It, is it sunny there or is it raining over here, there in Ho Chi Minh City? It's a day in Ho Chi Minh City today. It's a very nice day. It's a very nice day in Jakarta as well. I missed your Vietnamese coffee so much and your Pho Ho in Pasteur area. I love it so much there. <laughs> so, uh, we're talking about uh, the road itself, but unfortunately, we're having some plots all over the world right now and a lot of them is in ASEAN countries, yes? Yes. Yeah, uh, so I'm sure... Th yeah, maybe you would like to comment yeah. on that? Yeah, in ASEAN country, uh, recently we have a lot of problems due to climate change and we have, uh, especially in, in, in Ho Chi Minh City and in Mekong Delta, the flooding, the zone of the you will be part of your was. So yeah, I'm sure that all of the audience can see the importance of your presentation. Now, let's now see the questions that our audience have for us. Okay, the first uh, question for Kwa is, what are the key points in choosing the right cylinder road coding? So in order to, to choose the right cylinder road coding, you have to consider many factors, but the most important factor is the environment where the cylinder put. So if you know the environment, is there stone, water, or if there are any chemicals inside, then you have to be very careful in choosing the right protein. The environment is 
uh, is the key factor for that then. Okay, the second question is about the coding material. Which coding material is used in your HBOF process? Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, actually, every uh, manufacturer is used uh, different um, uh, coating material and that's different the quality and uh, the price. In both sections, uh, the coating material are uh, nickel-based powder. So we developed this uh, powder special for, for our coating. And the two main um, materials are nickel, uh, about 60%, and uh, chromium, about 20%. Okay, we're still waiting for more questions. Just click on the Q&A button, guys, and type in your questions there. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible within the time we have. So another question is about coding, of course. How is the repairability of the coding at site? Yeah, uh, it also depends on the coding process that you apply on the road. Uh, for coding, use a uh, uh, laser clamping process, the, the repair at site is easy, uh, but for SPOF uh, coating, it depends on the damage. If the damage is um, uh, small, that you can repair it uh, the at site, but if the damage is, is big, so you should send the cylinder to our authorized service center for repairing. So I think uh, we only got Time for one more question about the lifetime. So, how long is the lifetime of the coating in real conditions, Koa? Koa, are you still with us? Okay, my last yeah. question for this session is How long is the lifetime of the coating in real conditions? Uh, it depends on many factors like the, the coating type. The, the thickness, the, the coating process, the powder you use, uh, the operation, uh, how to do the maintenance, how is the, the environment. Uh, but in general, our SPOF uh, end of 2200 uh, is qualified and has an expected lifetime of uh, 50 years. Well, for the Q&A session and your presentation, I hope we, it could help all of our audience here to improve their productivity and, of course, their safety. But I'm afraid it's coming to the end of our, se of our session. Thank you so much. Once again, Koa, have a great day Thank you. in Ho Chi Minh yeah, City. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And the question that we did not get to answer now, rest assured we will get back uh, to you after the show. And, of course, we would also like to have your feedback at the presentation and the speakers. It only going to take one minute of your time. My first question, please put on the poll uh, button over there. The first question, do you find the speakers engaging in their delivery? Press A if it's very much, B so-so, or C not at all. And we value your feedback so much. That's why we have the second question. Did you find the presentations explain practical examples and useful techniques applicable to your operations a for very much b for so so or c not at all all right i hope that's an easy question easy task for you because we've got a full day of activities and exciting contents coming up on our event and that concludes our first session with kwa bah Nguyen on the right cylinder road coding for civil engineering applications thank you very much Ladies and gentlemen, and we'll see you again in around 5 to 15 minutes for mobile hydraulics aftermarket. Please go back to the lobby to get the correct link to the session.